Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 58. I am your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com. With us is a highly acclaimed and celebrated comic creator of Magic and Muses Volume 3, Malice, Kristen okay. Kumo Evans. So, Kristen, Hello. thank you for joining us. And 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 as of today, you're like your Kickstarter for Magic and Muses Volume 3, Malice, is live now, and it and as you said, it just got 100% funded. Congratulations. Yeah. So we hit our goal in our first week. So this little baby is coming out to everybody else's house and not just mine. Wow. So I'm super excited. <laughs> and those, those, but, and the, like your volume, this is like said, this is volume three. They are huge. They yeah. are, they are, they are, they are they massive. Are fat babies. Yeah, look at that, and it, and so and you say like each one's about how many pages? Three hundred and three hundred forty-four pages. Wow, um, thousand pages and something all together. So they're all here in this wonderful, smashed on tree pulp. Wow, and flattened look at that. for your convenience. <laughs> So as I say, you know, you know, before the interview, we're talking before we were talking before we went, we went live on this. Is that you know, just you know, looking at this, looking at this Kickstarter, it's it's fantastic. And you literally, as you said, you have thousands of pages uh, that you're doing here for for Magic and Muses. And do you want to uh, before we kind of jump in and start talking about the Kickstarter and talking about uh, talking about the world you've created? Do you want to kind of give our, our viewers and our listeners a, a, a background on how you got into making comics? Uh, sure. Um, so I actually went to school for animation because like any good web comic artist, I wanted to be an animator and then that didn't pan out. So, <laughs> um, but I, I joke, but honestly, like going to an animation class gave me a lot of fundamentals in comics that sometimes even a lot of comic education misses out on. So um, one of the things that I, get complimented a lot on is uh, how they, my characters always look like they're moving. So um, I take huge pride in that and uh, actually attribute a lot of that to animation and gesture drawing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, so basically what happened is I've had this story kind of sitting in my brain for a while and I went through, I tried to write it in prose and realized that I'm bad at words. So I'm better at drawing. So um, I finally decided that like, okay, I'm gonna write this thing out. I don't care if it's terrible. <laughs> I just want it done because right. I'm tired of, of suffering in first chapter hell. Um, so I basically, uh, I got, I found out a book called uh, Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. Um, and it basically taught me how to break down a screenplay really easily and almost like fill in the blanks. Cause I've tried to do like literary um, research into stuff like, you know, a hero with a thousand faces and all that other kind of stuff, but it was always too complicated. Mm. Like, uh, unfortunately the way that a lot of how to write stories, um, books are written is how to write all stories. And it's like, oh, this is a lot of information. Um, but Blake Snyder's was really simple, concise bullet po point. Like, this is how you write a story from beginning to end to get your screenplay out to the nearest director as fast as you can. And I appreciated that. <laughs> so um, I just kind of filled in the blanks. And then my main premise was that there was going to be 12 girls because I'm a big magical girl dork. So it's always going to be about zodiacs and magical powers. So uh, I immediately had to figure out how I wanted these girls to be incorporated. Um, and then it was just a matter of like, doing the thing. So uh, I actually didn't start drawing it until I had um, all 1000 pages as like a draft. And then I was like, okay, so here's this epic in a draft form. I'm sure it'll be totally fine to do this, draw it, draw it all out. Cause it only took like a couple months to write. Right. <laughs> and seven years later, I did it, and uh, yeah, so I got all the artwork done, and a lot of back and forth, and a lot of crying, and not knowing what I'm doing, and banging my head against walls, but um, yeah, it's out, and it's finished, so it's kind of amazing. And so it, it's going to be the three volumes. This is this is the entirety of 
of Magic and Muses, or is there going to be a fourth one, or this is it? Right. No, there's going to be three, and that's it. Um, okay, all right. So basically, uh, I, because I was actually one of the few people who actually had their entire comic finished before going to print, right. um, I actually knew how many pages it was going to be. So after that, it was just a matter of like, how, what is the cheapest way to print this beast yeah. um, and still have people buy it? So in, I kind of worked backwards. So mm -hmm. instead of going to a printer and being like, I guess I'll take 200 pages to print and then print that, it was, um, okay, so can I print a thousand a thousand pages in one book? And my printer was like, no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Do you know a fat book? Are you getting it in hardcover? Because that's the only way that thing exists. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there's like physics involved now. So um, I took a step back and did some research and um, I could have done two volumes, but I kind of realized that $60, $70 for a book that no, for somebody that nobody's ever heard of um, is probably not gonna do too well, even on Kickstarter. So, um, I decided that I was going to do three books because while four volumes would have made it cheap enough or a bit cheaper, instead of $40, right. it would have been about 20 to $30. Um, it would have saved middle books because apparently middle books in publishing are a pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> because people will buy volume one by itself, but right. they won't buy volume two by itself. But right. if they buy volume two, then you better make sure you have volume three because they buy one and two and they don't find three anywhere, then they, they're pissed. So right. <laughs> it's been an adventure learning about the mechanics of publishing from the sim. So you so that was gonna be my question. Did you find it so it, it would have been cheap, as you said, it, it would have been cheaper to do four volumes, but you would have probably lost readership if you had four volumes then? It, so here's the weird thing is that the more expensive the upfront cost is, the cheaper it actually is. So it would have been cheaper to print two volumes at like 50 or 60 bucks right. um, for me and for people to buy. Um, but because it got knocked down to three and you include shipping and all that kind of stuff, it's actually much more expensive to ship out three individual books than as a collection. So... Um, Every time somebody adds a new volume to their collection, that's actually increasing the expense of getting it published because wow. putting more pages in a single book is actually more cost effective than putting less pages, but people aren't willing to usually put up that upfront cost on something they don't know. So it's that's actually why as a series gets more popular, um, omnibuses start coming out because they know that people will afford this upfront cost on a much, much larger volume uh, because they're already familiar with it. Okay. So they're more likely to sell a really big fat, fat book for, you know, anywhere from 50 to a hundred bucks, depending on like what kind of collector's edition it is. Um, then if it's something they don't know, and if there's something they don't know, then somebody's willing to, you know, I'll toss tw $20 on a book. I don't know. I'll toss $10 on a book. I don't know. Right. So um, it's really just a matter of like trying to hit that balance. Right. Um, and personally, I just I just didn't want to do four books because <laughs> honestly, the, the three are exhausting enough as it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to um, just real quick, let's 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 talk a bit about um, who the who your characters are. Do you want sure. to just kind of give people a bit of a background of? So uh, this is my actual main protagonist, Willow. Okay. Um, and so she is uh, the main character. She's a dorky little uh, ADHD ridden, naive schoolgirl um, who uh, has a good sense of justice, but no way of executing it. So um, she, kind of starts off dealing with this bullying problem with her friend Emma, um, who I also have here. Yeah, Emma. Um, who ends up being bullied by uh, Georgia, the okay. British bully character. Um, and then, uh, but she doesn't really know how to solve it. So they obviously don't trust the teachers enough to contact them and get involved with them. Mm -hmm. um, so she just kind of flounders around a bit and then uh, a familiar comes in and just kind of tosses her some magic. Um, and 
unlike a lot of magical girl stories, this familiar doesn't talk. So rather than being this great bastion of advice, it just kind of leaves her with this thing that turns her into a rat creature and then abandons her. <laughs> and she's uh, unfortunately exposed in front of the bully. So uh, using blackmail, the bully tries to get, you know, figure out how she gets powers too. Willow doesn't really want to, but she also doesn't want to be like exposed at all. So, uh, or have her friend beat up even more. And she ends up giving the bully magical powers. And then of course, if you give the bully magical powers, you want your best friend to have magical powers too. So oh, that's how it worked. Okay. Yeah, so she, she brought, brings in her best friend to also give her powers. Uh, and manages to give her powers and uh, they still don't really know how it works. They just know that they can do this. Um, but then while they're like screwing around trying to figure out things, uh, they accidentally give Emma's sister powers as well. So mm -hmm. now not only is this thing something that they can do, but now it's also like infectious. Like they're spreading, they're spreading the ability to get magical girl powers to the rest of the school. Um, and they don't know what it's for and they don't know why they have these powers, but they definitely don't want to get caught. So, <laughs> and is this, is this, does this take place in like our world or is it like a fictional world? It's a, it's a fictional universe. So um, most of the, mo pretty much all of Magic and Muses is contained to just the school. Um, mostly because I didn't want to focus on a lot of outside world building okay. considering they are school girls and most of their life in this world is very contained. So everything focuses around um, the rules of the school, how the chit system works, um, you know, the fact that they actually don't really get to leave the building that often. Um, and that even after they graduate, there's still going to be other walls, whether it's the cities or universities or anything like that. So there's this very enclosed nature to the universe they're in. Most of this is going to be explored in the second series that I'm already working on. So that's when the full world building will take effect. But seeing as how they are teenagers um, in a boarding school, like growing up, like your world is very, very small and you don't really realize how much bigger it's going to get. Right. So I definitely wanted to kind of keep that feeling and realize most of the tension is buried in the walls of this little school. And and so your sequel, so the, your your sequel series that you that you alluded to, is it going to be the same characters, or is it going to be a, a new group of characters? So it will be the uh, same cast. Okay. There's a bit of a time skip, so they are much, they're a couple years older. Um, but yeah, so it'll continue with them. Um, but I wanted to have a separate series, mostly because one, um, I didn't know how fast I was going to actually return to the series, uh, and two. Um, this way I could kind of like relaunch in a way. So rather than rebooting my comic, it would, it would be the sequel comic. And then people, if people couldn't find the first comic, they could find the second comic and then go back and read the first one. Um, so it could give fresh ground to new readers and they wouldn't necessarily have to read the first one, but it would be good to read the first one. Right. So, and, and so you're, so the, the, the characters themselves, as you mentioned is like, so they have, they, they take on the it looks like they take on the the persona of specific creatures or animals along with some elemental powers or how does that work? So uh, I'm a big zodiac fan. Mm -hmm. um, so they each take on an animal of the Chinese zodiac. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. So Willow is the rat and Georgia is the dragon and uh, Emma is uh, the monkey. But um, I kind of played around with it a little bit. So um, Georgia is actually a Komodo dragon. And um, Emma is actually a mandrill, which is, um, if you know the Lion King, Rafiki is technically yeah. a baboon, but his face is taken from that of a mandrill. So um, I played with, with what they were supposed to be a little bit. Okay. Um, and then each character, of course, is that, that creature. Um, they all have their own elemental powers. Um, they also have their own gem, like birthstone. So uh, Willow is the Garnet, and um, Emma is Sapphire, Georgia is Emerald, Tilly is Aquamarine, um, Ruby, all that kind of stuff. So that always that also corresponds with the, the months. They also have a flower associated with them and a oh, wow. tree associated with them. 
Um, they also have a, a Greek zodiac symbol associated with them, but that doesn't come in until the end of the series, or like the end of this series. <laughs> um, so keep your eye out in volume three. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, I just kind of blended them together and made them little subtle, like really subtle. They also each have their own very specific elo uh, metal associated with them as well. Okay. So, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, because you see, I see the gems on there as well and everything. So tell us about how did, what was your inspiration behind it? Because you talked about you wanted to write this story. What was, what, what was the, uh, the impetus of this story? Like what was, was it something you've been thinking about for a while? Or was it something that was more or less um, that, that you've just kind of been working for a bit over many years? How did this, this story come about? I mean, the first concept of it happened probably when I was in high school. Um, I was big into magical girls, um, but I, I'm i not as as into feminine, typical feminine magical girls. So like, I love Sailor Moon, but like most of their outfits are figure skaters. So I was always sitting there being like, oh, the Zodiac is right there, guys. Why are there 12 <laughs> of them? And why don't they have swords? Um, so then I got into this other magical girl series called Magic Knight Ray Earth, okay. um, which is specifically about Western fantasy style RPGs that these three girls get into with magical. They have magic and swords and gemstones. And so most of that is very much inspired by uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. The oh. only thing I admit that I didn't get to put in was the giant mecha suits, but you know. <laughs> I have my limits <laughs> and I didn't feel like drawing 12 mecha suits, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I just really liked that. And I liked that idea. And I mean, it's not original in the slightest. You can go on TV and and find a million Zodiac magical girls. But um, yeah. I was like, no, it's so good. It's so yeah. good. I'll, I'll push this as far as I can go. So. And, and so we, so talk a bit about also is um, as we're talking about it, what about the world building aspect of, of, of creating this? Like how much did you, how much of this was that as you're, as you're writing your story out that um, you'll say, I mean, I'll get back to this later. Um, this is a good thing, a, a little note on it, or how much of this was like, like, this is how, this is the magic system. This is the world. This is where their powers come from. How much of this did you put in advance that you used or how much of this was just kind of like making notes as you go along? Uh, all of it was making it up as I went along. <laughs> and I know how bad that sounds, but like, it was like working in reverse. I, right. I working linearly, linearly is just something that I am not good at. So, um, you know, it was just kind of like, I have 12 girls. What do I do with them now? Why do they exist? Okay. I guess I got to work out some relationships with these kids. So, you know, that's, uh, that's actually where like, I started writing stories and like they were all friends and go lucky and get together. And I was like, wow, this is boring as shit. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I was like, okay, well, let's go bring in some conflict. What's a, what's a good high school conflict, bullying, victim, best friend scenario. Let's do that. Okay. I can't give her powers to the, I can't make the best friend character get the powers first because um, she will just immediately use that to protect yourself from the bully, which will expose all of them. So let's do it in reverse. Um, so uh, like uh, most of like the stuff, like the magic, like I was still figuring out a lot of stuff by the time I was inking the end of the series. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like most of it was flying by the seat of my pants. Cause I, I don't, I've never really written before. So it was just kind of like, how do I solve this problem? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I, when I did, I would write it down um, and I would just keep solving problems and then finding out what new messes I made and then fix them in the next step and then just keep going back and forth and being like, okay, I think I've cleaned everything up to at least make it look like it wasn't a mess. Um, yeah, and then once I had, funnily enough, because it was finished, at least in some form, all in the draft form, um, I gave myself a break. So then when I wa walked into series two, I could be like, let's assess this top down right. rather than from the ground up and like try to view this as an audience and see what questions I need to answer and what I need to do. And luckily 
because the series has started running online, um, feedback from fans and and questions from from people engaging with the comic have been like, oh, I don't understand what this is for. Oh, this this sounds really cool. I hope there's a reasoning for it. And it's like, oh, okay. So that's going into second series too. <laughs> what can I alter in the dialogue now before we get to it? That'll explain things better. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's just a lot of back and forth until you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, have any good advice because honestly, like, I just kind of kind of try to slap everything together until it looked like a comic. So, so speaking about advice, I, what I want to do is just like for for some of our, <laughs> you're just like I don't even give advice. I was like speaking about advice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to, so, so as I said, a lot of our, our, you know, listeners and, 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 and viewers were, are, you know, doing web comics or wanting to learn. I want, I did, you know, pulled up your, your latest issue, your latest issue. So talk to us, talk us through, um, and this, uh, this is Tilly and Aaron, correct? No, this is Tilly and Sarah. Tilly and Sarah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, talk to us a bit. That's page 491. Wow. You're yeah, that's. How how did what is this? Is this all digital or do you draw stuff out? Talk to us about your process of how you, um, you put so, together strip. Yeah, um, it's all digital. It's been all digital since day one. Uh, mostly because I actually have a tick drawing mm. on paper. So I actually hate the sound of pencil on paper and it just oh, really? drives me up. It's a it's a weird thing as an artist. <laughs> so thank God I have digital uh means. Um but yeah, so it used to bother me. So I, I've always been like straight digital all the time. Mm. Um, and of course, coming out of college, um, I had equipment from there. So I had a tablet and my rig, my computer rig and that kind of stuff and right. learning software that way. So it was really good to get into it from that side. Um, and yeah, it's all just freehand, um, just drawing straight onto the computer. Uh, and then wow. even these old pages are all in Photoshop. Um, so I would draw with the um, the freehand pen tool. And then I would select all of the freehand pen lines and then stroke it that way because I didn't know what Lazy Nazumi was at the time. So I actually couldn't get the pen pressure to work on Photoshop, so I cheated it <laughs> <laughs> with vector lines, um, which is how I got all of that line variation. Um, that's changed now that I am working in Clip Studio because okay. I was stubborn and took forever to get into that program. And now that I do, I'm just like, oh, I don't know why I just didn't get into this sooner because it's so much easier. Yeah. So I have, yeah, some people are just like diehard Photoshop folks, but you, and it's once you kind of get your turn over into Clip Studio Paint, like it's no turning back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you're drawing. I find right. it depends on like what your system is. I have a relatively simple style, so it works really well with Clip. Um, right. Like I have, I have very defined inking lines. I have very simple sh cell shading. Not that Clip can't do more, but if you're looking for a lot of filter effects, like I still use Photoshop for for lettering because oh, okay. Clip, Clip actually can't. Uh, do uh, English style lettering as well as I'd like it to. It still focuses very heavily on Japanese. Mm. Um, so like vertically works differently than horizontally. And I, I just need the, the text tool in Photoshop so that it's clean and concise and diamonds the text the way that I need it to be so that it looks much cleaner. And of course it has the stroke effects for my word balloons and that kind of stuff. And the word balloons are all vectors on top of the rest of the page. So okay. while everything else is freehand, I actually vector out my um, my word bubbles just because, uh, I mean, I could draw them in, but because I half the time I don't know what my dialogue is going to be, I prefer being able to <laughs> to move the vectors around. I, no, look, like, <laughs> I awesome. keep changing that dialogue, but it, like after pages went up for the oh, print really? version. So like, don't, <laughs> like, <laughs> So you do, so do you use what when you do this? Are you using a, are you are you using a stylus as you're doing that? Are you using a mouse or how do you or do you have like a, a a tablet that you're drawing on for that on Clip Studio Paint? How did how does that process work? So I've always had a tablet, uh, whether okay. or not it was uh, Intuos, which was a flat uh, non-screen tablet. 
Mm -hmm. um, but now I work on um, a Wacom um, oh, mobile okay. pro and I had the companion just because they were mobile so I could move them around and I wasn't changed to my, uh, my desktop. Right. Um, so now I use them and they're on screen tablets and that's what I use to draw all the time. So it's very nice and convenient, but it, honestly, you don't need something like a Wacom tablet for price wise. Yeah. Um, it's just, I know what I'm doing with it. So, and, um, I got a loan from my old job to buy mine. So it was, it was like, Oh, I can just buy this fancy toy through them and then slowly finance it that way rather than uh, pay up front. So. Right. Wow. Okay. And so, and, and so, so, so Wacom, you use Clip Studio Paint, um, all digital. Okay. And so, so, so when you're putting, so, you know, when you're putting this together, um, how, how long would it take you to do a, do a page like this? Uh, it's so hard. Cause I actually don't work on a single page at a time. I actually okay. work in batches. So, um, I actually work in 22 page batches, um, and I'll do two chapters and then go back. So, uh, the way I put it is like to get a finished chapter, I'll already have two chapters rendered. I'll have four chapters, uh, flatted out. I'll have eight chapters inked i'll have 16 chapters penciled out <laughs> oh, so wow. yeah so like okay. like the second series already is finished in layout form um and now i'm penciling the whole thing and pencils are i think the entire first volume of, of the second series is technically already penciled out um but it's all about working to the end so i always know where i am all the time so it'll take wow. me a couple of weeks to get a chapter out for inks which is probably the longest time chunk so three uh, three to six weeks for 22 pages of inks and then um wow. and then everything else is much shorter but if i was working one page at a time it would probably take me about a week wow. to get every page done um, so you <laughs> i was gonna say so you're like so that you know i feel like doing flats this week i'm just gonna just do all the colors and then all right now i feel like ink so uh i mean i do actually have this massive spreadsheet um yeah. that i use to keep track of everything um but yeah no it's uh it's very um it, it is still very precise so i am working linearly but at the same time i'm jumping through the whole project at the same time Wait, okay. so it's like okay so i've done two chapters of pencils it's time to go and do a chapter of inks now so i don't burn out on pencils and then i'll do an entire chapter of pencils it's like okay or inks and then i'll go back to pencils and i'll do another ink and then it's like okay time to do some flats now and then i get until like it's finished and then the whole thing is done and then i'm like oh i guess i'm out of pencils it's time to start to flat the rest of it <laughs> so um yeah by the like i had when I had the first chapter of 12 done, um, I realized that my uploading time still gave me like almost an entire year to get me to get more pages finished. Wow. So, but I, I still had most of the story drawn out in some form. Right. So it was, it was great to have because I could always be like, no, this is definitely coming and this is spoilers. And, oh, this isn't working time to rip that out before anybody knows it exists. <laughs> so. <laughs> So when you put this together, I mean, did you have um, did you have any like beta readers in ahead of time before you you put it out on the on 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 web comics at all? Or so I took two years before I actually had a finished um, page. Okay. Like a fully finished page. Um, I did not have any like I had one or two close friends who offered to read it. But unfortunately, there's a difference between somebody who's your friend offering to read it and somebody who actually wants to beta read. Right. Um, with just, just you know, they have different motivations going in and seeing it. So um, I actually didn't get um, the beta readers that I was looking for until like the project was like way at the door and I was finishing most of it and I could put it up with some friends that I'd met through web comics and been like, tear this apart, but also know that I'm not, changing a lot of it because it's already <laughs> done. So <laughs> most of it was going back in typos and because I'm terrible at prose um, and dialogue changes and that kind of thing, finding out what I could manipulate without doing too much extra work. Mostly because like I'm 
I'm a very forward looking person. So going back and redoing pages is just not something I'm interested in. It's honestly, right. as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what I'm doing. So if it's bad, it's bad. And I'd rather work on the new page because there's <laughs> tons of other stuff going on right now. And so let, let's talk a bit about your, uh, your Kickstarter, as we mentioned at the, uh, uh, at the front of the show, um, you, you got it, you know, funded in the first week. Yeah. And we're fully funded yeah. For all three books. Yeah. Uh, and so you're, you're already, I think you were, we already got a couple of backers since it started. So you're at 95 backers. Uh, so, so let, let talk, talk about this. So this, as you said, this is volume three. So this is it. This is the whole kit and caboodle right here. Um, and that somebody can, and we'll go, we'll, we'll go through the, some, some of your tier levels on here, your pledge levels. Um, but so, so talk to us a bit about what people can expect from volume three. Okay. Uh, this is going to be tough because volume two has some pretty big things that happen in it that I also can't talk about because there's <laughs> spoilers too. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, obviously, where the webcomic is now is uh, Tilly has snitched on our crew um, mm -hmm. to some of the staff. So now the school staff is alerted to their magical shenanigans. Um, at the same time, the group is kind of struggling with some issues they've awakened a girl in front of a bunch of people but they can't find her necklace and now the girl who stole the necklace is trapped in this uh pink bubble thing that you're looking at right now so there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time and it hits a breaking point in volume two um and so all hell breaks loose in volume three volume three is essentially the end it's one big tie-off for dealing with all of these issues. Oh. <laughs> no, I was looking um, at because I was I, I have on so I'm looking at the, the the save the cat. So this is basically act three, basically, then yeah. right? More or less. So, okay. Yeah, it's entirely act three. It's a log act three, but I like my action scenes and I've earned it. So yeah. um <laughs> And with a cast of 12 characters, that really bloats an action sequence. <laughs> Why? Um, but yeah, so all 12 girls are awakened in this one. They're all wrapped up and they're uh, ready to get the hell out. All right. So yeah, it's a, uh, I want to talk about it. And I've already gotten some good, good read, good read um, reviews for volume three for some early readers. Okay. So uh, I can tell you that it's good and it's a ride and, there's one thing I thought I made is a roller coaster, so I think you're gonna have a rip snort and good time. <laughs> and congratulate! So you're a nominee. So how can people help with this as well? You're got nominee for the sequential magazine awards for. So that was favorite writer, but you also have one for um, best graphic novel for 2020, correct? Yeah. So uh, I applied for the sequential magazine awards for Canadian authors and uh, graphic, well, cartoonists, graphic mm -hmm. novelists, whatever. Um, and I put my hat in for whatever they threw me into. And surprisingly enough, they threw me in for best writer and best graphic novel. So if you go to uh, the sequential magazine, uh, you'll be able to vote for me if you so choose. Oh, wow. um, but of course, uh, I actually know most of the people who are, uh, who are also up. So I don't blame you if you vote for them because they they are a great group of people and right. they are horrendously talented. So I don't know why I'm there, but you know. <laughs> and so so let's talk us a bit about your um, your pledge levels here. So yeah. so the the first one you get here it's uh, um, PDF. You want to the, the PDF is the first one. Is yeah. So that's just volume three of the PDF digital okay. edition. It'll be 344 digital pages. Uh, the PDF volumes are actually higher res than the digital, the cheaper ones on my store. Their mm -hmm. web versions, they're mainly just there so that you can read, download it and read on mobile. But these ones are full size PDF. So they look very, very nice on pretty much any resolution you open it up on. Right. The files are a little large, just Heads up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have, okay. Yeah, so um, we actually have a print um, that's actually there under physical rewards. Um, there's a really, a really gorgeous um, print of Willow as a fairy, who is our main character, um, with all of her crazy magical goodness um, in a very nice Art Nouveau style. 
So if you would like that on your wall, feel free to click that tier. Um, I made a mistake though. So um, you weren't actually supposed to get, yes, there it is. You weren't actually supposed to get all three PDFs. <laughs> On that print. one? <laughs> yeah, but I accidentally put it. So I will still be honoring that. Um, so the PDF uh, trilogy reward will get some extra stuff. Um, yeah. Instead. Okay. So, yeah. And, yeah, and then you have the P – so so this you're going to add something to this because – Yeah, so okay. um, we were talking about uh, the Threads anthologies that I've been a part of in Spider-Force. Okay. So I actually don't have those short stories up for sale, so I'll be adding them to the PDF bundle. Okay. And you have, I love, and I saw you did some previous Kickstarters of these standees. Yeah. These are, uh, these are amazing. They're little transforming standees. They each have their regular schoolgirl side and then their magical side. Um, and also, small little subtlety is they... As each new girl shows up, they get new, wait, where's my camera? There it is. There's new uh, cool duds. So Willow has her mask and Georgia has her, her gorget. Uh, and then Emma gets the, her little belt oh, cool. there. Um, all the way to, uh, to a new character who actually has the full gear that they wear at the end of the series. So. Yeah, they all slowly get new pieces of articles of clothing on their little standees. And you can actually get all 12 of them together as a set or your favorite. Okay. Yeah. And you have, um, and you have here too, is then you have uh, your next pledge level. This is kind of like your, uh, th this here with is, is, is volume three. So this would be the per people that already purchased volume one and two. This would, they would get, okay. Yeah, no, this is, this is. This is for everyone who supported the first two volumes. You get it $5 off for Kickstarter. Um, they're usually $40 a price piece, but uh, for Kickstarter, I take an extra $5 off. So, because I love you guys. Thank you so much for getting us going. And then you have here, you have the the standee bundle. What's this? So you have the book bundles. Yeah, so you get a little standee that gets paired up with your book, and they're both at discounted price. Okay. So, you get a couple dollars off putting them together. Um, and then you have, and this is, this is the one for people that haven't seen or have a, who, who are interested in it. They can get that. This is the trilogy right here. And this is yeah. limited. Yeah. This so is limited this is quality. Limited so quantity, yeah. it's limited right now. Uh, but because we funded, we can actually take the limit off because I only had so many left in stock. <laughs> But now that we've hit funding goal, um, basically all of the money will go into more reprints. Okay. So any extra money that we make on this Kickstarter is going right back into making more books. So um, we're going to be taking the cap off of the trilogy bundle. Uh, you can definitely grab all three of them together. Um, I mean, I highly recommend it because it's probably the cheapest way to grab these guys. Um, they are very fat, so be prepared for this big big box to show up at your door um and right and so you you're, you have those listed that you said like that's 40 dollars canadian correct yes sorry so, when i'm talking it's always canadian yeah. i actually can't see the numbers in the u.s so okay so so it's about four so it's about it's about forty dollars can forty dollars canadian so this is pledged at a hundred dollars canadian so you're actually compared to this putting all those books together you're saving 20 20 bucks yeah. By yeah, buying, so. getting these, this bundle here. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you sell them, you can buy them on your site now for $40 Canadian, but it, so if you go straight to the Kickstarter, save 20 bucks, go straight to the Kickstarter and get, get all three right here. So yeah. Yeah. And then talk to us a bit about the ultimate bundle. This looks. Yeah, so the ultimate bundle uh, is a bit pricey, but you essentially get everything that's available. So you'll get all three books, you'll get every standee, you'll get a bunch of pins, wow. you'll get uh, the print, um, you know, and then of course you'll get all the digital editions. So every tier comes with a d the digital ex editions because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, if you buy a book online, you should get a digital edition so you can read it right away. Um, or, you know, God forbid something happens to it in the mail. <laughs> but 
uh, you know, like, so you get everything. And like, I actually have moved these bundles in our last Kickstarter. Uh, they didn't have book three in them, but they definitely had everything else. So like, they're quite a tidy package to mail. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have been told that they are quite worth it. So thank you to everyone who gets them. I really Don't appreciate it. So I'm really curious about, I haven't, I've, all the kickstarters, I've never seen these acrylic standees. What made you think of this? This is a great idea. Um, I've seen the standees okay. made by a few people. So they would just get little characters done. And I looked at them and I was like, you know, they have a front and a back. Like, what's, what's the one thing magical girls are known for? It's transforming. So, um, so I... I did my first little standee just for myself, just so I had one willow. Yeah. Um, and as soon as I made it, I had a bunch of people come out of nowhere and be like, oh, I want one. So <laughs> I was like, okay, let's, my, I mean, my, my comic failed, but maybe I can do a successful Kickstarter with one of these. So I think I asked for like 250 bucks or something like that. And like we grossly overfunded that. And we were actually able to get the first six girls out um, which was amazing because Nana wasn't even in the book yet. So she she actually got out in physical form before the book even came out, which is amazing. <laughs> and 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 so what is so how, where did you so from um you know thinking of anybody that's listening or or, or watching this is like that's a cool where did you get these made? Where would somebody find like a someone doing that? Where would you get these acrylic standees made? Where did you go go for that? Uh, so my current manufacturer is Zap. Okay. Um, they're based in the UK. Um, there's a few more manufacturers coming out. I'm currently, I love Zap very much because they have great quality. But yeah. unfortunately, the UK uh, exchange rate is pretty crazy coming into Canada. So <laughs> I've been trying to look for, unfortunately, some alternatives um, because <sighs> border fees are so expensive. And right. uh you know, it's one thing when you're ordering a thousand dollars worth of standees, and it's another one when there's like a three hundred dollar charge on top, and you're just like, okay, <laughs> well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, I do really like Zap's work, and uh, they've they've done a great job so far, and I would love to stick with them. But um, their current the UK is currently changing how its tax works, right? And I have to do all of this application stuff to get stuff in and out of the UK and it all reads like stereo instructions to me. So I, I have to take a break from the UK and come back to it. <laughs> so I when, I, it. When, I, when I'm looking at these, it reminds me of like, is there, uh, is, is there any thought dream or idea or plans of doing more with this IP? Like think about like, board games, role-playing games, tabletop role-playing games, or is there any of this stuff or, cause you, you work in a video, a video game of this. There's gotta be oh. something you've been thinking about. Oh man, you are. So I love comics because, yeah. and I will fully admit that they are to me a compromise because I cannot make a studio production animation <laughs> as a single person. <laughs> um, so like, and I do love comics as a genre, but I will honest, I will be totally honest with the fact that if I could make this into a television series or grow this IP franchise in some way, yeah. that would just be phenomenal. Cause I mean, like, you know, I don't mind where I am. I actually like, like working and like, I'm planning on doing more published stuff, but at the same time, if this baby could just like, walk away on its own legs and start running like i would be all for it because i can tell you right now i'm exhausted so if someone else wants to do work for it they are quite welcome to <laughs> <laughs> i mean could you i mean you, are, you have the standees it looks like when i when i if you look at it as a picture it looks like it's like it's it's a it's a board game like it looks like a board yeah. game um, it's funny that you say that because i actually i went to a very small festival nearby to start yeah. selling books uh, like two summers ago and I had a bunch of people be like oh I've seen that tv show and I was like really where where have you seen that so I like to think that it's it's a compliment to me and how professional my stuff looks right that uh, that people already assume that it's bigger than it is because uh, I would love for it to go somewhere someday like you know just get picked up by something like 
just turn into a TV. I have a, I mean, I've tried to get it into a TV series, but unfortunately no one's picked it up yet. Right. Um, but yeah, no, a TV series is probably my go-to just because I'm a big animation fan. Yeah. Um, but like movies, live action, sure, like go for it. I like take my baby and go. I'm, I want to make more <laughs> comics <laughs> and more money. <laughs> so, so this is right. So, is it you, you, you reached your goal? Um, it's you, you have, do you have stretch goals in planned? I thought I saw. So did you? I do, I don't have them written down yet okay. in like full form because i'm still kind of like needling ideas but the sticker sheets are definitely coming out so okay. if we hit 7k every physical reward will get a sticker sheet and every digital reward tier will get icons of the same stickers oh, so okay, that cool. way yeah so i don't like to leave my digital backers out as i get more physical rewards so right. um yeah we'll get a set of sticker sheet which has already been drawn it was actually in the first um kickstarter i did but it, because it didn't fund, I didn't make those stickers. So I'll be making those stickers. Um, and then I think I've changed another stretch goal to book plates. So this will be this will be a, a name plate that you can stick inside the books, um, and you can put your name in. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah. All right. Yeah. So so this has been great. We're already you know knocking on close to the hour already. So tell us that. So tell us then, Kristen. So where can people find your work if they're interested in learning more about Twelve Comic? Uh, so Twelve of Magic and Muse can be found yep. at xiicomic.com. Um, the specific web comic can be found at slash magic dash and dash muses, mm -hmm. um, and we update six times a week. Uh, so wow. okay. yeah, Mondays to Saturdays it updates every day, and there's still two more years for this comic to update before it hits the end of the published, now going to print published trilogy. So um, there is plenty of updates coming your way, either digitally or you can read the whole thing at once by backing our Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, you can find out the whole world that way. And if you're interested, you can always buy Kristen the coffee. You can support her on her, her, her coffee page. Yeah. Um, and check out, she's uh, you're also, I see that you're also on, you're at, you're at Facebook, you got Twitch, you got Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. I mean, you got, you yeah, got the whole so setup. I'm on Discord. I'm on, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Pillow Fort when that ever comes back. I'm on Tumblr. I'm everywhere. Whether or not <laughs> I'm actually like there is a whole other story. But So you have a Discord channel. I do. Yeah. That so people awesome. can come in okay. and talk to me hear my ranting they'll probably find out how drunk i was before this conversation started because i was <laughs> celebrating my win today so. <laughs> i didn't have to put any blush on which is good you know? <laughs> well thank you very much thank you very much kristen this was fantastic so uh you know we we, we, we uh we met on your your now in your third book, so I, I I wish I wish I'd discovered your stuff earlier, and we would have talked on your second book. So, but when you come out with your with your next series, please come back, and I'd love oh, yeah, to chat sure. with you about it. Yeah, I'd love to. Cool. I'm always willing to talk about myself, as I said yeah. before. I am narcissist, so <laughs> you to to me and I will talk your ear off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you so much. It was it was so fun to be here, and I really appreciate you reaching out to me. So thank You're you. You're welcome. Have you, I has anyone ever? Has anyone ever said? So tell me more about Z comic. Has anyone yes, ever? Said yes, <laughs> yeah. I had more people call it Z, and I was like, "Bro, oh, I just wanted to be cool, guys." So I made it Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just twelve, and then I'm just like, "Man, that's lame." Z sounds so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs>